MashaAllah, shukran, uh, Brother Khaled Abdul Majid. So today's topic at first glance, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may seem arbitrary in general to some. Yet when you realize that the Prophet was sent as a mercy, as a walking guide, it becomes clear that through his study, the religion is open completely. So what I'm trying to say is today, inshallah, Mufti Hussein Kamani will perhaps shed a new light on this topic that is constantly repeated. And you may ask, why is that so? And it may be obvious, but the point is that through the, the topic of Muhammad wasallam, you really always will find new answers, inshallah. So the deen, he is our walking guide to the deen. So inshallah, if you all will please pay attention to Mufti Hussein Kamani, after I give a brief bio of him, you will inshallah come away with this a little bit better with your deen and more iman. So quickly, um, I'm sure many of you know our Mufti Hussein Kamani uh, was born and raised in Kentucky after completing the memorization of the Quran. MashaAllah, in Buffalo, New York, he went on to complete a rigorous eight-year program in the United Kingdom. Uh, also, he had some of the greatest traditional and genuine Islamic education under the greatest scholars in the world, uh, such as Sheikh Yusuf Mutallah. And also, after graduating with top honors, Mufti Hussein went to uh, earn his postgraduate degree in business management and strategy at the University of Coventry. So I want to see, I want to let you guys emphasize that he has a well-rounded and really worldly perspective on our deen, alhamdulillah. Currently, he resides in Chicago and holds various programs for the youth, so he's very involved. He also currently serves as the imam at ICC Message in Chicago. So please give a warm welcome to Mufti Hussein Kamani. Inshallah, he will please uh, shed some light on this topic and benefit us. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> First of all, I'd like to request the brothers and sisters that, are gathered, that have gathered here today to first of all pray for the original speaker that was supposed to be addressing the crowd today, Sheikh Abdullah Yusuf Madiun. You've heard that he was, um, he had called in today morning saying that he was sick, he, was food, he had some food poisoning because of which he was very ill, he was suffering in pain. So we should make dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa inshaAllah. Um, the topic that I've been appointed today to speak, or speak about is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The reality is that it's such a topic that even after studying for eight years in the Alam class program or traditional Islamic curriculum, I can clearly, in, uh, clearly confess without any humbleness at all that it is not possible to cover this topic within not only 45 minutes or 30 minutes not in a year or two years, an entire lifetime can pass by, but the reality is that this topic can be covered. The reason being is that because the life of the Prophet ﷺ is very dynamic. It's not a one-dimensional one life, where we look at one dimension of the person's life and it ends there. Where this person, um, for example, the basketball player, he has one career, where he started, where he ended. It's something you can look over and you know summarize the person's life. The life of the Prophet is so great that every aspect we study it from, every aspect a person studies the life of the Prophet from, you realize that it was unique and complete. Whether it be from his physical characters, characteristics, how the Prophet looked, Hassan bin Thabit, radiallahu ta'ala, he describes the Prophet in the most beautiful words, in words that no poet can ever compare to. He says, وَأَحْسَنَ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَرَقَدْتُ عَيْنِي وَأَجْمَلَ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَلِيدِ النِّسَاءَ خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأَ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبُ فَكَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقْتَ كَمَا تَشَاءَ. Now when it comes to the physical characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ, just 
the sight of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a sign that he was complete and pure. And then the companions they would say that when they would see the face of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that this person cannot be a liar. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's truth shed it off his face. This was his physical characteristic. And then when he studied the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the sacrifices that he made, the way he was tested, this again is another chapter. And then we study the knowledge of the, the, knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, another chapter. The mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, another chapter. And every aspect of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we study, we find that there is a hidden treasure there. And the reality is that many scholars came in the past to try to discuss the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Many volumes are written, many many books are written, many different languages. But each person, when they wrote their book, either in their preface, before they started the book, or when they ended the book, or some point in their book, they've all they've all admitted that no person can cover the life of the Prophet sallallahu in a few words. Whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim, the number one personality who changed this world was none other than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is an admitted fact. And the only way we can see this is by studying the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A few, a few, a few simple, um, a few, a, a few simple tests that we can take. A few simple experiments. You know, um, when we studied our post grad in uh, in business management, we were required to go to businesses which um, did not adopt any 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 strategic uh, approach. You know, some you know how we have like our daisy um, shops, for example, restaurants that work on just buy and sell, try to buy as much as you can, try to sell as much as you can. There's no vision. There's no strategic setup for it. So we were asked the students to go to these shops and carry out some simple te- some 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 simple um, tests. So when we went to these shops, when we went to these shops, what we were told is to uh, note down first of all their, their their figures, their income, how much they're spending, how much they how much they've earned in the past five years, some basic figures, note them down, and then we were told to implement some strategic uh, some strategies onto 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 uh, onto, the, onto, the, onto these onto these shops. And then five years later, or two years later, when the course came to an end, we were told to again take down some figures, see if the profits ra- they raised or they fell. A very simple um, experiment. Now, the reason why we were told to do this experiment is because the only way you can find out whether your methods are successful or not is by seeing the previous, before we started, and then after implementing the evaluation. Very simple um, exper- uh, experiment that we can carry out. And, you know, as a young, uh, as a young child while growing up, I often saw this um, advertisement on TV too. Whenever they would advertise for Tide, the child's playing in the in the in the, in the backyard, and then he, he he falls on the ground and he's all muddy. He gets up, comes inside the house, comes to his mom. And the mom's all angry at him for a second or two, and then she says, "There's no need to worry." With a big smile on her face, and she pulls out the bucket of Tide, and then she takes the shirt and she washes it in the Tide, and it's brand new again. So, and the reason why they would show that is because before and after, before and after, and our product is so good that within minutes you know, our stick, our type stick, or whatever they're advertising, it can change this product, something that you can never imagine, something that you thought was useless, something that you thought had no use, no use at all, it's now worthy of being thrown away in the garbage can. Our product is so great that it can turn this thing into the best product on the shelf again. That was the message given through this advertisement. So likewise, in order to study the effective teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, a simple experiment, let us look before the Prophet ﷺ arrived, and let us see after the Prophet ﷺ departed. And if we find any difference there, then we are also to admit that the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa taala with his teachings, the one, the Almighty, Allah, Allah azza wa jalla. So when we study the life of the Prophet of the, the Arabia, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent to, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent to a nation, a country, a town, a city, where people were very far from humanity. Wives were treated as slaves, mothers were discarded altogether, daughters were buried alive, and we've all heard of many stories with regards to these incidents, how ignorance prevailed in, the, in, in Arabia. How they were very far from reality. And the Persians and the Romans, who were the superpowers of the time, their kingdoms arrived to Arabia, and they refused to go and conquer Arabia. The Persians refused, the, the Romans refused. Why? Because they felt no threat from these people. These people had no civilization, they had no knowledge, there was no culture amongst them, these people were, were totally illiterate people. So therefore there was no need for um, their armies to go and co- conquer these people because they felt no threat from these people at all. They, they would never send their armies to Arabia. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was sent to this very same nation. And these companions, they described themselves in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These companions, when we hear them describe themselves, 
before the arrival of the Prophet وسلم, we think to ourselves again that this shirt can never be washed again. When we see the state of this shirt, we realize that this shirt can never be washed. Jafar the Nabi Talib, he is standing in front of the Najashi, the king of uh, Abyssinia. And the king of Abyssinia, he says, describe to me your people. So then, Jafar the Nabi Talib, he starts off by describing his people by saying, كُنَّا قَوْمٍ أَهْلِ جَاهِلِيَّةٍ نَعْبُدُ الْأَسْلَامِ وَنَأْكُلُ الْمَيْتَ وَنَأْتِ الْفَوَاحِشِ That we were people who lived in ignorance. We were a nation that lived in ignorance. 